So today we're gonna to do Kellogg. Um, Kellogg stood out to me because it's looking very good on a chart. Somebody brought it to me in my morning, uh, my morning show this morning, and it looked pretty good. Now Kellogg has had a interesting year, I should say. I mean, everybody from, I know they got a big boost from when we were in lockdown, of course, and people needed, people were kind of stocking up on food and whatnot. Kellogg makes those box goods and, and what have you. So they're an interesting company um, from that perspective. They had quite the run. I think we're gonna, we're gonna look at them. I'm really liking what they're looking like from a long-term perspective. It might be something that we can get into, especially in the bid and ask nation. So we are going to see what we have. I know they've had here, right here, Kellogg, six, up 6.4% 6 since their last earnings report and can it continue? I don't know, let's see if it can continue. And let's look at Kellogg. So nice and easy, K. The one thing that I do like about Kellogg is that they have, just right looking right off the rip, their bid and ask difference is one cent. I absolutely love that. So let's zoom out further and just take a look and see if there are any 50% rule going on, anything like that. Let's take a look at one year. No, nope, pretty good. Um, you can see that this was back in pandemic time. Got to about 52 bucks and they had a great run to almost $75 a share. Now they're back into the 60s, but we can see that our trend is moving up nicely on us. So let's take a look at how we can trade this. This is gonna be, remember, this is our long-term weekly chart. This is our daily chart. And then we're gonna go to a day trading chart, which is intraday uh, after we're finished. So first thing that I noticed about this, and this is a perfect stock to add today, um, I'm gonna be telling my bid and ask nation that they can be adding to this today. So we're coming up through the sweet spot very nicely. We've had a lot of days of pretty decent volume. And this, this yellow line here, that's the average volume. It's very hard for, over the last two or three years, for companies to meet their average volume every day, just because the market overall volume has been so low. So I used to look at it and want to see a lot of companies with over average volume. The problem is that you can't you can't really work that way anymore. You can see that a company like Kellogg, look how many times in the past six months they've been over that yellow line. Not too many. So, I mean, maybe half, maybe half. And that's not ideal. We've, they've also missed quite a few days. I mean, you can see there's a big gap there, big stretch of days, maybe a week there. And then recently too, really under, the, so the volume has been very low. So what do I do to adjust? I look at consistency of volume. Has the volume been shooting up, down, up, down, or has it been pretty consistent in its pattern? And this, for the most part, with the exception of maybe Friday, or we are tailing off a little bit, but it's been pretty consistent. I mean, I'm splitting hairs here, so let's see. I'm fine with that. I really love that we're getting up through the sweet spot. You could have probably added on one of these two days right here because you had a nice engulfing candlestick, but today is perfect. And it's even more perfect because you're adding on a nice engulfing candlestick while pushing through this turquoise line, which is the 100 day moving average. So we are really busting through that 100 day moving average, a nice 2.2% move as of right now, almost two o'clock on Monday. So that is really great news. So if you wanted to, if you wanna play this, you can go ahead and add on a pattern like this on Kellogg uh, today. And just remember, the reason I'm saying that today is more ideal than these days, because when you were getting these candlesticks and golfing, let's look over here, it was these two right here. They were moving up and I was concerned about this 100 day moving average right here. Today, of course, like I just said, we blew through it. So this is just wonderful, it's just gonna keep going further and further. So let's go over to a, day, a, a swing trading chart and see what to do. Remember, this is, in my ideal world, it would be one to three months, probably not gonna happen in today's market just because of the volatility. So with this one, I'm looking for two weeks plus on a trade. Over here, I'm looking to one to five days. This is always the same, one to five days, in and out. And then of course, my day trading chart is intraday, I'm in and out in the same day. So I like that we blew through that 100 day moving average. I like that we're on top of the 50 and 25. My next concern, of course, is gonna be the six, at 64 bucks, this 200 day moving average. No big deal. We buy it when we start getting candlesticks that are engulfing and running up there. Once it hits that, 
moving average, it's probably gonna hit some resistance and it's gonna pull back on us a little bit, just a little bit. And if anything, I think that we're gonna just have candlesticks bouncing between the 100 and 200 day moving average for some time until hopefully for that, for Kellogg, the 100 crosses through the 200. And for everybody, if you're in it, you're getting engulfing candlesticks up like that and you're making some serious money. But um, for today, again, if you wanted to even a swing trade, and I know these look similar, but remember the goals here. With this one, you are getting into it. When you get into this 200 day moving average, you're gonna be taking your profits. Over here, because we're long term on it, when you start running into that 200 day moving average, don't have to worry about taking your profits. As long as your red line is continuing to go towards 80%, your yellow line is following underneath, you can go ahead and uh, stay in this. You don't need to take profits going into the 200. And that's, the, that's what makes the big difference between your daily chart over here and your weekly chart over here. So that's good. Let me pull out this just a little bit. I just wanna look for any other patterns. So if you guys looked in the Trading 101 series, there was a pattern that I talked about called the head and shoulders. So here's your head and here are your shoulders on the person. And then of course you have, this is just your body. So here's your arms. So this was your head and shoulders pattern. Um, the nice thing, I would have been concerned about it, but they were able to bust out of that head and shoulders pattern. So that is something that is very nice to see um, that we did in fact break out of that head and shoulders and just go, if you're, if you're a little bit confused about this, just remember, go to the Trading 101 series. There is a, a, um, an entire lecture on head and shoulders and this is your, I'm no artist at all. That's why I do money and not art. There's your, uh, there's your head and shoulders pattern. So head and shoulders typically indicate changes in direction. Um, and when they don't happen like this, you're getting a little breakout, take advantage of it and go make some money on it. So let's go over to our day trade and see what we can do here. So remember when I'm teaching day trading, of course, these videos are not live, so I can't really teach them to you <clears throat> from a live perspective. But what I wanna do is teach you how to day trade in these videos. So today, this morning, we opened up pretty nicely, had some nice engulfing candlesticks right here and right here, um, and we were over 80%. So remember, and I reiterate this in pretty much every video I make, if you wanna go long on a stock on a, from, on a day trading perspective, you need to be over 80% with your stochastic um, and getting good engulfing candlesticks like you did here and here. Once this red trend line drops below 80%, like it did right here, you sell your shares, take your profits and go. And you can, you can always get that indication when you start seeing more selling volume, that's obviously the red, that is coming in instead of green and you have candlesticks that are moving down on you. As soon as that breaks 80%, you're gone. Now, if you wanna go short, total opposite, you have your 20% area between 20 and zero. Same thing, as long as your red candlestick, I mean, I'm sorry, your red trend line is bouncing under 20%, you're fine. As soon as it bounces over 20%, sell your shares, take your profits and run. There is um, a couple of patrons today that traded some, some stock that started with an H, I don't know what it was, but they traded it this morning, they followed the rules, they made money. Pretty simple to do, as long as you follow the rules, just all you really have to do is keep just following your trend lines. As long as they went long on something today, as long as you're over 80%, you're good. Um, actually, I wonder if I have it in here. Well, bonus, do I have it? Uh, no, I don't have it, it didn't save. So that's it for Kellogg from this perspective. So let me just do a quick recap for you guys. Remember, with Kellogg, I love that we're breaking the 100-day moving average. It's the most important thing to remember from this video. Hedge funds make their decision at the 100-day. It looks like there's some institutional money coming into this, which is great. Even better, with all that money that's flowing into the stock, your bid and ask difference is one cent. Perfect. You're coming up through the sweet spot nicely. I would like to see a little more separation between the red and the yellow. I would like to see the yellow line actually maybe a little bit over here. And that could happen tomorrow. That could happen as the day goes on. No worries. So if you like it, go ahead and you can add to it on a, on a pattern like this. From a swing trading perspective, remember this is one to five days over here. You can add to it today because we're busting through the 100 day. You have some eh, pretty decent volume. Just remember that when you start going into this 200 day, it's about $64. You gotta take your profits off the table. 
it's gonna probably pull back on you a little bit and then hopefully you'll get some uh, money inflow and get breakout like that over the 200 days. So that's there. Let's go to a day trade. Remember guys, most important thing, over 80% up here, over, just stay in this area between 80 and 100. When you're shorting, stay between zero and 20. When you're shorting, once you break through 20%, going positive with the trend, you're gone. And then you would have these red engulfing candlesticks in that case being down here for short. Of course, when you're going long, you wanna have good green engulfing candlesticks like these three, over 80%. As soon as you drop below 80%, here's your area. Let me show you, this is your stochastic. This number right here, this percent K, that's what I keep referring to that 80 and 20. Once that number drops into the 70s, you're gone, sell your shares, move on. Um, or wait for, wait for it to pop up and do it again. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're gonna be hitting 25,000 subscribers today. Patreon's growing, great. Join the Bid and Ask Nation. I don't know how many spots left. I think it's in the 20s now. So that number will keep going up from there. It just went up from 55 to $58 for a monthly subscription. So you get access to me. Ask me any of your questions you have. I do Patreon only. Uh, seminars. I did one on shorting. So if you're interested in shorting, there's a seminar waiting for you if you haven't joined yet. And remember with everything, you get all of the Everything Money software for free. And this is software that Paul and I were using to manage our family, software that Paul and I are going to use to manage our family offices and uh, go from there. So you guys have a great day. Keep making money. I'll talk to you later. See ya.